This is one of the seemingly increasing number of miniature lamps where they pot the circuit boards entirely in a sort of silica rubber. Um, silica? Silicone rubber. And this, the first time I saw these, they started off as the version that goes into a G9 lamp holder, and it was to emulate the small size of the tungsten halogen lamp. But they're actually quite neat. Um, I'll just plug this in. They seem to have found their way into other forms. So, um, how's that for flicker? It's modest amount of flicker. I'm just going to do the finger... Yeah, there's a modest amount of visible flicker if I do the finger test. But um, it's not really that flickery to the eye. It's power draw. 2.6 watts. So that's actually higher than I was expecting. But anyway, let's... Um, Let's put that out of the way, the holder, and let's um, open this up and see what it's like inside. I'm guessing it's a capacitive dropper, because I can actually see some surface mount capacitors, one on either side of the board. And I'm not sure if they're just wired in parallel. So they've put a bit of heat shrink around this, and that may just be to... so that the whole cap doesn't just pop out, because it is quite rubbery, it'll be quite hard to grip it in the... Um, in the metal lamp holder. So let's get that off. Get the little cap out the bottom as well. Oh, it's got the wire twisted around it. They're usually just the wires pushed through and then the um, pins pushed in. And hopefully this will just more or less wiggle out now. Or maybe not. I don't know if there's any components down the middle. Am I going to have to be destructive here? Oh, let's just chop it a bit anyway. It may be that that uh, is a little green plug that's been put in the bottom to trap the um, the wire used for the connecting onto the shell. Oh no, there's a little there. Uh, there's actually a little hard base here, and that makes the connection. Okay. So it's a little circuit board, and it's just been used as purely as the device that's going to help hold this in, but it's holding it in by the leads, the two leads that go into it. Wish I'd known that. I would have the soldering iron ready to desolder that, but not to worry. Um, so I can see I can see four diodes, which are probably forming a bridge rectifier. There's two on either side. There's a capacitor on either side. I'm guessing that's two in parallel. And then there's really just a resistor. Any other resistors? No, it's very, very minimalist. Let's um, cut it open. Oh, that's quite, uh, quite easy to cut open. As soon as you touch it, it all just sort of like slices. What an odd texture. It really is like a gel. Makes me wonder, um, what's the chance of these actually sort of falling apart while you're putting them, you know, um, the components actually sticking out through the side of the coating, but uh, I've not come across any that have that issue. Okay, let's see how well this peels off. Oh, it's crumbling off in like little gems, little rubbery gems. But coming off quite cleanly. Screwdriver. The LEDs are mounted on two circuit boards that are just sort of crossed with each other. And the only place I see a solder connection is actually at the top. It 
technically speaking, it doesn't need a discharge resistor across the capacitor because nobody should be opening it. So I'm going to actually just short the capacitors out, just in case. Don't want tingles. Well, having said that, it's usually the electrolytic that would apply to inside. They would still need a discharge resistor. Maybe that's what that other little resistor's for. But I don't see an awful lot inside it in the way of components, which you wouldn't really expect anyway, because it's very, very small. Almost there. can reach most of the components now. I might just cut those two leads at the bottom and get rid of that little circuit board. I don't think it's doing anything other than providing the connection. And as a double check, I'll just reshort those caps. Right, I think that's most of the stuff off. So I'm going to um, get the meter over and then we'll uh, find out if these capacitors are wired in series or parallel or whatever. Ah, right, okay, here's something. The circuit board that crisscrosses, there on the main circuit board there are the four diodes, two on either side to create the bridge rect far. And on the auxiliary circuit board, oh I've smashed one of the LEDs off, what a shame. Uh, there's a resistor there and a resistor there. So maybe there's two resistors in series with the whole LED string to actually just limit the um, the peak current, the inrush current through through them when it's first powered up or if there's any transients that just goes through the capacitor. So that means that the that little resistor there might be across the capacitor's right meter. It's very pretty. It looks like I've smashed a windscreen on my on my bench now, but in a rubbery fashion. Odd texture. It's kind of like it snaps, almost like silly putty type stuff. Let's go to continuity. So I'm guessing that one of these leads is going to go straight to the capacitor. That one is. And the capacitor will then go to uh, one end of the bridge right far. There maybe, or there. It's going to one end of the rect far. Um, are these capacitors in parallel? So I'm touching this side of the capacitor and this one. That's connected in parallel and the same on the other side. So um, that little resistor there, it's either in series or it might be across those capacitors. One, and I'd expect that to be continuity two down there. Yep, okay, time to get a little microscope out, time to get the notepad and scribble things down. So, little microscope, beanie off, glasses off, my proper American beanie I should add, made in America believe it or not, a Carhartt beanie, I didn't know they actually still uh, manufactured clothing in uh, countries like Britain and America, I thought it had all been outsourced to other countries, so it's good to know that. Oh, the batteries. I, I left this on and the batteries are running way down. 105. That's one mego. Now, what about uh, these little resistors? This might be a wee bit trickier because they're still covered in gunk. And also, it's going to be quite hard to get into that. One 
101, 100 ohm. And is it going to be the same the other one? Oh, it's still covered in stuff. 101, it's 100 ohm. Okay. <coughs> Let's do the schematic. Live, neutral. No great surprises here. Again, it's a standard capacitive dropper. Let's check out the value of the capacitors with a little dicky capacitance meter. So this is actually going to measure both of them at once. So, wild guess. It's going to be quite high. I'm going to set this to the 2 microfarad setting. I think that one's connected up to there, so let's... Uh, Might be wrong. Might be that one that's connected to one end. It's quite hard getting them through this uh, goopy mess. I'll bring it into the field of view again. So. 647. So those are two, probably two 330 nanofarad capacitors. So live comes through two parallel capacitors. 330 nano, 330 nano, which also has a resistor across it of 1 meg ohm as the discharge, so you don't get little zaps off the connector when you unplug it off the base. So that then goes through to the bridge rectifier, which is just formed from four discrete diodes. Neutral goes straight across, um, sign, sign, plus, minus, and then it goes through the diodes, the LEDs, and is interrupted by a resistor, and then it goes through some more. Um, I'll, I'll count the number afterwards, and then another resistor. It's quite a neat little design, actually. It's quite a ni nice layout. 100 ohm. 100 ohm. And the value of two 100 ohm resistors, it spreads it out, and it's quite good for limiting the, the uh, maximum current that can flow through the circuit. Technically speaking, at power up with a complete discharge capacitor, if it went on at the full mains voltage um, of about peak, peak voltage would be about 330 volts. It would be it would be over an amp would just pulse through the LEDs momentarily, but they there are enough that you know it's they're, they're not going to really suffer major damage as a result of that. So how many LEDs are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, there's a lot. Eight times eight, there's 64 LEDs. So I'm um, doing the maths. I wonder if they're wired as two parallel circuits because um, 64 LEDs times three it would be 192 volts. I wonder if it's actually dividing them as two parallel strings. It's quite hard to tell, actually. If it is, that may explain the two 100 ohm resistors, because that diagram might be wrong then. I shall double check that and I shall... Uh, actually, I'll do it right now. 